أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نشكره على آلائه ونعمائه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل على محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل It has been narrated from the sixth Imam of Ahl al-Bayt Al-Imam al-Sadiq salawatullahi alayhi that he once said ما أقبح بالمؤمن أن تكون له رغبة تذله How embarrassing, how ugly it is for a believer to have a desire that humiliates him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human being in honor and dignity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have given honor and dignity to the progeny of Adam, to the sons of Adam. One of the greatest treasures that we human beings have and one of the greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is honor and dignity, karama. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ That is why you find noble people, people of honor and dignity. No matter what you do with them, they are willing to forgive you. They will interact with you in the best way possible. But don't ever mess with their karama. Don't ever mess with their honor and dignity. Because they are noble people. They value honor and dignity. No matter what you do with them, they'll forgive you. But the minute that you mess with their dignity, with their honor, with their karama, you will see a different reaction. Because it's very valuable. There are people who are willing to fight to protect their honor and dignity. There are people who are willing to die to protect their karama, their dignity, their honor. It's very valuable to them. And actually this is something that we learned from the lives of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, what did he say on the day of Ashura? When those enemies of God wanted to take his honor and dignity, what did he say? You can take my life, you can take my family, you can take my lands, my wealth, everything, even my blood. But you cannot take my honor and dignity. We will not allow ourselves, the Ahlul Bayt, to be humiliated for our honor and dignity to be taken away. And hence we have a hadith narration that says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never allows a believer to give away his dignity. You can give anything in your life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes believers go through very difficult tests, very difficult hardships. People attack you. You have to be patient in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life is difficult, but don't allow yourself to be humiliated, to lose your honor and dignity. Never submit to oppression, to injustice, to corruption. Because the minute you submit to injustice, to corruption, you've lost your dignity. Some people misunderstand what dignity is. They think if you want to have dignity, that means no one can say anything about you. People have to come kiss your hand and respect you. No. 
That's one type of dignity, but that's not the real dignity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us. The real dignity is to stand firm and not submit to injustice and to corruption. When you look at the life of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, do you know any family in history who was persecuted and harassed and fought and killed more than the Ahlul Bayt? Every cal calamity befell them. They were attacked, they were persecuted, they even were subject to character assassination. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, for 70 years, Bani Umayyah would curse him in Friday prayer on the pulpit. On the day of Ashura, just see what happened to an Imam al Hussein. السلام. But I ask you, did those enemies succeed in taking away the dignity of Ahlul Bayt? In taking away their honor? In taking away their karama? Not at all. Look at 14 centuries later. See in the world today, millions of Muslims, probably over a billion Muslims today, in their salah, they have to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Otherwise, their salah will be invalid. يَا أَعْلَى بَيْتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ حُبُّكُمُ فَرْضٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ أَنزَلَهُ What does Shafi'i say? O oh, the Ahlul Bayt, your love is an obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us. مَنْ لَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا صَلَاةَ لَهُ The one who does not say salawat on you, then he has no salah. His salah will be invalid. This is the karama that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this is a lesson for us. Now there's very one important point here. When you think of your honor and dignity and karama, we always think there are enemies out there trying to take away our honor and dignity. But you'd be surprised to know that the number one enemy who can take away your dignity and honor is not some outside enemy. It's not even the shaitan. It's you yourself. The most one who can take your dignity and honor is you yourself. And this is the word of caution. This is the warning. We have to be very careful not to allow ourselves to take away our own honor and dignity. And hence we have this hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. مَا أَقْبَحَ بِالْمُؤْمِنْ أَن تَكُونَ لَهُ رَخْبَةٌ تُذِنُّ How embarrassing, the Imam says, or how ugly it is for the believer, for a mu'min, to have a desire which humiliates him. We all have desires in our lives. Allah created us with needs and desires. But the problem is, when we allow these desires to blind us and to take away our honor and dignity. You know, an Arabic saying says, Sahibu al hajati a'ma. The one who has a need becomes blind. You can't think properly. You think as if you only exist in this world and my problems are the only problems that exist in this world. Hence, you become blind. You start making mistakes, and these mistakes take away your honor and dignity. But as for the true believers, they never show that they have a need. They never show. For example, the Quran, when describing the poor believers, mu'mineen, who are faqir, who are poor, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states? يَحْسَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُ أَغْنِيَاءَ مِنَ التَّعَفُّفِ when those people who do not know them, they look at them, they don't think they're poor. Because they're so sensitive and protective of their honor and dignity, they do not show to anyone that they have a need. This is a great quality that the believers have. 
And Allah loves those people who are not blinded by their desires and not blinded by their needs. Now in brief, how is it that our desires and needs humiliate us or take away our honor and dignity? There are two ways. The first way in which our desires can take away our honor and dignity is our social honor and dignity. Because every human being has a social reputation. Now unfortunately sometimes because of our desires, we do inappropriate things which, loss, which cause us to lose our reputation in society. Some people when they need something, they will drive other people crazy. They will knock on this door and that door. They will go to everyone they know in society, please help me with this, help me with that. I want this, I want that. Have some mercy on yourself. Don't take away your dignity and honor. Some people, believe me, they will go to extreme measures. Now when you do that, people will not respect you the way they would. People will not take you seriously. Because they will see this person, all he's concerned about is himself. And his needs, and his desires. He really doesn't care about anything else in society. So people will lose respect for you. If you want that social respect, to remain intact, don't allow your desires to blind you. Yes, even if you need something, be appropriate. Go to a few people whom you trust and say it in an appropriate way. And don't insist. When you keep insisting, then you are taking away your honor and dignity. I remember a few years ago, in Detroit, at my father's house, it was in the afternoon when someone knocked at the door. I went to open the door. I saw two girls who were coming from door to door fundraising. Now I was thinking they're fundraising for a project, either to help the poor or something good in society. So when they were asking for some donations, I asked them, what is your project? What are you raising donations for? So one of the girls said, she said, look, there's a musical concert in London, UK, and I'm raising money so I can go and attend that musical concert, so I can buy the ticket. <laughs> now, of course, I didn't tell them anything because I wanted to be respectful. But deep down in my heart, I told, you know, myself, why are you doing this? I have no respect for you when you do that. You're taking from your time and energy, going from house to house, raising money not for poor people, not for orphans, not for a charity, not even for a good social event, just so you can buy a plane ticket to go attend a musical concert in London. Come on. Where's your respect? Where's your honor? Where's the dignity? That's just one minor example. Of course, we have many other types of examples. But don't ever allow your needs, brothers and sisters, to take away your honor and dignity in society. Because one of the most valuable things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you is your honor and dignity. Unfortunately, when you go to some other communities, alhamdulillah, this community is a wonderful community. When you go sometimes to other communities, you see people, because of certain desires, they fight over petty issues. Whether they're standing in line to get some food, you see fighting. You won't believe how many times I've seen people fist fighting because of the food. Or because of the microphone, this person wants to read, that person wants to read, the other one wants to read. And sometimes they get into a fight and believe me, I've seen it with my own eyes. People fighting because of that. Because they have a desire to read, they're willing to fight with other people. This is not acceptable in the eyes of Allah. So this is the first type of humiliation. And the second type of humiliation that the human being brings about himself because of his desires is religious humiliation. I tell you, the biggest source of honor for a human being is to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the biggest source of humiliation for the human being is to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
sometimes because of our desires and temptations, we take away our honor and dignity because these desires cause us to disobey the one who created us. In one very beautiful hadith attributed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi He says, Man arad izzan bila ashira. If you want honor and dignity without having a very big reputable family, if you want the honor that these very prominent and famous families and tribes have, and if you want wealth, but without any money. You want to be very wealthy, but not through money, through another way. And if you want respect in society, without being a king, without being a president, without being a politician. Have you seen how people, they respect their kings? Do you want that kind of respect? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam says, فَلْيَخْرُجْ مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ عِزِّ طَاعَتِ If you want all of these, then you have to exit, come out from the humiliation of disobeying Allah to the honor and dignity of obeying Him. Simply obey Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, be a good servant to Allah, and you will get that wealth, you will get that honor, that dignity, and that respect. This is what we truly learn in the holy month of Ramadan. As we are restraining our desires, don't allow your desires to cause you to fall into sin. Because you know, when you sin, the first victim is not other people. The first person whom you're harming is not others. You're harming yourself. You're losing your dignity. When I sin, I am taking away my honor and dignity. Never allow that to happen, respected brothers and sisters. Realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you obey Him, He is the one who will give you honor and dignity. Don't allow this material world to give you honor and dignity because it never can. I remember once a brother, many years ago, he told me, Sayyid, I have this problem that I'm suffering from. I always feel that I need to buy expensive clothes and brands to feel good about myself. I need to buy those fancy sunglasses and those expensive clothes so I can feel good about myself. I just told him one thing would change him, just one simple thing. I told him, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and He's given you honor and dignity, right? How do you feel, you as a human being? You need a piece of cloth. Yes, it's expensive here, but it's probably made in China. It's not worth more than five or ten dollars. But because of the brand on it, it becomes expensive. You need a piece of cloth, a material thing, to feel good about yourself. Where's the karama? Is this the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for you? Don't allow yourself to be lowered to that status. And that's how you can protect your dignity and karama. Therefore, in the month of Ramadan, we train ourselves to control your desire. When you have a desire, don't rush. Don't be in a hurry. Wait, ask yourself, will this desire protect my honor and dignity? Or will it cause me to be humiliated, either in my society or in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us use the remainder of this month to build on our honor and dignity by only obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by being very respectful individuals in society, by not allowing our desires to humiliate us, to blind us, as if we think there is no problem in the world except our own problems. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. Oh.